Okay, Gerald Clark, questions, uh, or Gerald Clark, uh, there's questions, more questions for, for you from the uh, War Aircraft Builders uh, groups. What type of fiberglass did you use on your War Aircraft? I used a uh, eight point, I think it was 8.5 uh, bi-directional. And then I used uh, uh, directional on the wings. Okay. That's for the plans. That's for the plans, okay. And how many layers of fiberglass did you use on Two. the fuselage? Two. Two on the fuselage? Yeah. And how Made many on the wings? 25 degree angles. Okay. And on the wings? Uh, the wings uh, was two. Two. All right. So two layers of unidirectional? No. Or, or, uh, uh, bi or, or unidirectional. So it's unidirectional mm -hmm. and then bidirectional everywhere else? Right. Okay. All right. And uh, how many, are there layers on the leading edge or is that just the same thing? Same thing. They get two. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, what are some issues a new builder should be on the lookout for as they pertain to skinning the aircraft? Oh, uh, you should uh, start, of course, you start at the rear and work forward. So everything's overlapped uh, going forward. Okay. Um, please explain where the hard point for the dummy ordnance is attached to. Uh, like a hard point, like on the Folk Wolf, it's on that, that. Yeah, it's underneath there for, uh, for a, a bomb rack. But other than that, there is no other hard points on the wings. Uh, or for, and that'd be for Thunderbolt or Corsair. Yeah, there is some uh, hard points for the uh, Thunderbolt. But not a Corsair. But not of course, of course. Well, I've never built a Corsair, so I don't yeah. know. Okay, well, that's what I did. All right, so uh, did you do your own parts welding? And if so, describe any concern you have with the parts. Uh, I've done all my own welding. I built all the parts except for the Boston gears that go on the, uh, that retract the gear. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I machined all my own parts. So you just bought the gears from the from a company, and then it's okay. All right. Uh, please describe the flight instruments in the airplane. Oh, the same as a J3 Cub. Okay. Very simple. Very simple. Okay. Minimum all VFR, lightweight. Yeah. You know, very <laughs> simple. Uh, what type of epoxy do you recommend? Uh, there are so many epoxies out there now. Uh, better ones than what I used. Uh, but, uh, I would say aeropoxy is just about one of the best. Okay, aeropoxy, all mm -hmm. right. And uh, do you use, uh, does he use on, or do you use the epoxy on your, uh, on your aircraft with the spars? Or do you just cover it with uh, like varnish? What do you cover? You can, you, can, uh, you can get a, a, a good varnish, will work just fine. Okay. On all your wood parts. Uh, see, what type of propeller did you use? Warp drive. Warp drive, and it's grounded up, and it's, it is a ground adjustable. Ground adjustable. And you have it set for, he wants to know about climb or speed prop. Uh, it's, I set it at 15 degrees, and I think if it was at 16 degrees or 17 degrees, you'd have better speed, but you wouldn't get off the ground quite as quick. Okay, and um, what type of foam did you use to cover the airplane? Polyurethane. Polyurethane? Mm -hmm. And what issues do you have with shaping it? Uh, none. It's very easy to did shape. Did you use the hot wire initially? No, no, you don't use a hot wire. Yeah, not on polyurethane. Not on polyurethane. You, just, you just cut it. And, yeah. and, okay. now, however, you could use regular good, good quality foam non-polyurethane and wire cut it on places where there's no chance that fuel will get to. Okay. So as long as there's no, like on a wing or right. something, if you need to do a patch or something? Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. During shaping, did you use a micro balloon paste to make the surface smooth or was sanding enough to make the foam surface smooth? Micro balloons. Mix, it. Mix the first layer in there 50-50. In other words, if I used a pint of uh, epoxy, then I poured in a pint of micro balloons and mixed them in real good. 
then put that on and then lay the cloth on top and squeeze you it through. Okay. All right, and then general flight questions. Is there any concern for aileron flutter? And if so, how did you address it? Well, you can see how I addressed it. It's, yeah. yeah, there was a concern for flutter on my airplane. Uh, okay. It definitely was, was getting ready to flutter uh, when I pulled the throttle back. Okay, that stopped it. That stopped it. So okay. you put the weights on it to correct? Yeah, yeah the counter bag. Yeah. Basically, you're, bas you're basically moving weight ahead of the, the hinge axis to, right. to, to put more weight forward instead of back. Okay. Um, what is the power off glide ratio? I would say uh, about like a brick. So a brick? So <laughs> just throw a brick One to one. <laughs> one to one. So it's, okay. uh, it, 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 uh, when you land, you, you keep the power on till the, you keep some power on until the wheel's on the ground. Yeah, don't pull it off. Don't pull them off. You'll drop like a rock. Okay. Um, and this would lend itself to the comment. I, I think other people have talked about sink rate, so don't pull the power off. And that's kind of what you do on a Piper Arrow. If you pull the power off, man, that thing's coming down. How, uh, what trim issues uh, have you faced? I haven't had any problem with trim at all. Okay, so no trim. And all you did was normal tabs. Yep. No mechanical uh, trim tab. No. Uh, okay. Uh, any difficulties maintaining altitude? I no. mean, does the airplane just stay right where you leave it? Right. Um, what about uh, during a power off stall, what is the indicator of stall and how does the airplane react? Well, this one here, it stalls at 70 miles an hour. And uh, a lot of the times you'll feel that right wing trying to drop. Okay. So. All right. You get any verbal? You get. Uh, do you feel verbal? Do you feel? Oh uh, yeah, you'll get you'll get some. Uh, you'll start to feel something yeah, start to happen. It. You'll get a moment. You it won't just go drop on you. All right. What uh, during power off stall? What is the indicator? And how does the airplane react? So you had a power on, for one thing, yeah. and then a power off. Is it about the same? Power off is about the same. Okay. Seventy miles an hour. Seventy. Uh, have you have you performed light aerobatics in the airplane? Uh, yes. Okay. And are there any maneuvers to avoid? No. I want to do a lunch or walk or something like would that. It spin, would it spin? <laughs> sure, it'll spin. And, and come out of it? Yeah. Okay. That's well, you have to kick it out of it, but it'll, well, yeah. it'll come out of it. Uh, the uh, the roll rate's faster than a Christian Eagle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those big ailerons, I bet. <laughs> so, have you spun it? No, I've never spun the airplane. Has anybody? No one's yeah. ever. Oh, someone has? Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. So, it has actually spun, yeah. and the guy said, hey, it comes right out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you ever landed the airplane dead stick? No. Would not be fun. No. Probably have to come in at like a hundred. You would. You would. You would come into the end of the runway at least a hundred miles an hour to keep it have yeah. enough authority. Okay. Um, what are the normal and minimal takeoff landing distance the distances? Oh, uh, it'll get off the ground in in eight hundred feet, and it'll land. And about the same, we usually roll out about a thousand. The one nice thing about it, it will roll straight out. Okay. And have you ever taken off on a short field with a 50 foot obstacle? No. No, you'd like to have something clear in yeah. front of you? Okay. Um, those are the questions. This airplane has a Continental 0200 engine. Yes. And so that's the power, it's 100 horsepower, mm -hmm. thereabouts. And so all those uh, questions, all the all the stalls, all the flying characteristics, everything was based on 100 horsepower Continental. The other guys are putting in other things, Subarus, whatever. You think it'll do better if they had 125 horsepower? No. Keep them just yeah light. I mean, it would get the more weight you put on, the more horsepower you need. And the more I keep, I keep telling people, yeah. don't overbuild it. Okay. All right. Well, those are the questions. Another round of interviews. And